While a man lies visibly injured in the frame, a woman's voice is in the background, talking to, to her parents. She is excited to introduce a man called Ali to them. She remembers how she instantly knew he was a man with a good heart when she first heard his voice. She wishes they could have met him. A man wears a somber expression as he does his job of delivering water jugs. This is Ali. He makes his way to a parking lot, where he's supposed to be on watch duty. An older man scolds him for being late, and says he will find a replacement if he doesn't want to work there. Ali refuses, and the man leaves with a farewell. Ali is watching a show in the cabin, when suddenly a woman barges in and starts emptying her pack of snacks. Ali doesn't know her, but she hands him packages of nuts, apricots, chocolates and sodas as he sits there, confused. She jokes that it's all for herself, because she knows he doesn't like them. So she gives him the raisin cake she made for him, apologizing for its bad shape. Ali realizes soon that the strange woman cannot see, and is mistaking him for Mr. Zia, the old man from earlier. When Ali finally speaks, she's stunned and scared. She asks him who he is. She is disheartened to learn that Zia left, and asks if everything's alright with him. Ali mentions that Mr. Zia had to return to his hometown. The woman wonders if the reason she was not informed is because Zia didn't want her to be sad. They are friends, and used to watch TV shows together. She asks Ali why he just accepted whatever she handed him, and tells him to put it back. She then leaves after apologizing for the inconvenience. He watches her walk out with her mobility cane, just when it starts to pour. He invites her back in to watch the show until it stops raining. Even though she's blind, she feels his curious gaze on her. She asks if he's bored, and he denies it. She gives him the raisin cake to eat at night, joking that it won't poison him. Ali takes it without a thank you. She also points at the impatience plant in the cabin and asks if it has bloomed yet. When met with a negative, she demands he water it at least once a week, and change its location where it gets more sunlight. When Ali gets home, he tries the deformed raisin cake and finds it delicious. He gives a crumb to his turtle as well. The not-so-strange woman's name is Hazel, and she works at a customer service center. Her co-worker gives her her concert tickets back, because she cannot make it, and asks her to go with someone else. Her other co-worker also refuses, due to already made plans. That's when their boss Mr. Kennan pops up, scolding them for gossiping during work hours. Hazel seems to be wary of him, and understandably so, because he then puts his hands on her shoulders and whispers to her that she'll be surely rewarded for her hard work and overtime hours. Hazel reminds him that she's just doing her job. Mr. Kennan is not pleased. While on his delivery duty, Ali suddenly asks his co-worker to deliver instead. It seems that he wants to avoid someone. But unfortunately for him, that someone spots him and approaches him. It's an elderly man who is a coach at the boxing club. He lashes out at Ali for even coming near the club, and asks him to get out of his sight immediately. Then he storms off angrily. Another man brings Ali to the coach again, pleading him to be more understanding of whatever reasons Ali might have had for quitting boxing. The coach is livid, however. He slaps Ali and calls him ungrateful for quitting, even though he put his heart and soul into training him. He also mentions having saved Ali from the streets before he practically raised him like his own. The man, who is Ali's friend, reassures him that he will try to cool down the coach's anger. Outside, Ali's old boxing colleague catches up to make snide remarks about him wasting his strength carrying water bottles. He is also angry about Ali ignoring him when he made him a job offer. Ali drives off coldly. Hazel is back at the cabin, watching shows with Ali. She asks him whether he worked out today, and he wonders if he reeks of sweat. She just has a sensitive nose. When she asks about what clothes the woman in the show is wearing, he can only give her a very vague description. Just a dress and women's shoes, he says. Hazel finds it funny. At first, he assumes that she's asking about his clothes, and is somehow embarrassed about his sweatshirt and muddy feet. He washes them before he returns her food container. She jokingly praises his guts for eating the cake, and he is grateful to be still alive. She notices something in the container. It's a peach. She asks if he washed them thoroughly, and yet again, Ali feels like she's talking about him washing his feet. She officially introduces herself. Ali is hesitant to accept her handshake, but does it when she scolds him. He pulls it back when she's concerned about his extremely rough palms. Hazel struggles a little when she notices her bathroom is clogged. She later joins Ali again. This time, he has made sure everything smells better. Hazel asks if the actor in the show is handsome, and Ali says that's a given for an actor. She asks if Ali is handsome. He just says he doesn't know. She leaves when the show ends, but a car's loud honking scares her and she trips, knocking over some stuff. Ali rushes to help her up, but she has a sprained ankle. He asks another guard to watch over the lot, and takes Hazel to the hospital. She gets it treated and reminds him that she doesn't know his name yet. He tells her it's Ali. When she's tired on the way to her home, Ali offers to carry her. She jokes that he might regret it. He constantly asks her for directions based on landmarks and colors. He wants to take the short way, but she insists that it is a challenge. And it is, a huge flight of stairs. He claims he's not tired as he carries her up the stairs, even though she's slipping down and he's heaving. They're also attacked by a bunch of kids, and he has to speed up. Ali refuses to admit he's struggling because of how heavy she is. She asks him for another favor. He helps unclog her bathroom. 
He doesn't use the towel she gives him to dry himself with. She accidentally knocks over a table. When she hears something break, she is sad to hear it was her angel trinket. Ali puts the pieces in his pocket. She gives him the concert tickets as a gift of gratitude for his help, and tells him to go with someone he likes. He says he has no one to go with, and has no interest in music either. She offers to go with him if he wants. Before the concert, Hazel gets her hair done, and does her makeup herself. When Ali comes to get her, he's a little surprised, and she's a little flustered. At the concert, Ali enjoys watching her sing along enthusiastically. They have a meal together, but Ali is just listening to her talk. She talks about when she used to learn sculpture in college. She wishes she remembered things she had seen before she lost her eyesight more clearly. She says everyone forgets whatever they see, even things like what kind of flowers they pass by every day when they leave their house. She implies that people only look, they don't see. If she could go back in time, she would look at everything for hours. She asks Ali about what he does. She realizes he's strong because he has to carry those heavy bottles all day. She is curious about the reason he didn't study. She jokes that it might be because he was a naughty kid, who got in trouble often too. Ali sternly asks whether she must inquire about every person. She argues that she just wants to get to know each other. He mentions there's nothing to know, because he can see everything she does and eats anyway. Hazel is hurt and gets up. Ali still helps her get home, and when she thanks him before she goes in, he tells her that he's 30 years old and a former boxer. He admits that he did get into trouble, and did bad things in the past, like she said. He apologizes for his rude remarks, and says he just didn't have an answer to her question. She seems to have a lot of thoughts, yet she doesn't pry. When Ali is out delivering to the club again, his coach decides to have a talk with him. Albeit not ready to forgive him yet, he asks Ali why he couldn't apologize or call a single time after he left the club to go with Corey. Corey is a bad guy, according to the coach. Ali finally reveals that he was in prison for four years. After he quit boxing, he worked with Corey in his loan shark business. Corey had Ali beat up and threaten his debt owers. One time, Ali chased down a man who had a lot of debt, just to scare him a little. He pushed him and accidentally knocked over some cans of presumably gasoline. The man was initially begging for mercy, insisting he had a family to live for. But when he heard the police approach them, he snatched Ali's cigarette lighter and lit him. Ali's coach is stunned at hearing this. Ali apologizes sincerely to his father-like figure, and he comforts him. His buddy claims nobody like Ali has ever gotten in the ring after he left, persuading him to come back. But Ali has decided to end that chapter. Ali sticks together Hazel's angel trinket. At her work, Hazel gets forced into accepting a gift Kenan prepared for her. He wants to take her for dinner too, but she lies about already having plans, because Kenan makes her uncomfortable. When she gets home, she feels someone's presence outside her house. It's Kenan. He wonders sardonically if her plans got cancelled, and invites himself inside for coffee. He is also quite drunk. Hazel gives him some juice. She doesn't have coffee, because for her, hot beverages are hard to make. He remembers she had an accident during her college years where she lost her eyesight. He makes her uncomfortable again by calling her beautiful. She reminds him that he's drunk, and his wife and kids are probably waiting for him. He claims he divorced his wife. He is upset that she didn't even open his gift, and unboxes it himself. He puts the necklace around her neck and gets way too close, repeating how beautiful he finds her to be. She shrieks and backs away, trips and falls. She crawls away from him and asks him not to touch her. He gets mad and lashes out at her, shaking her violently for not accepting him, even though he could get hundreds of women who are prettier than her. At that moment, Ali barges in. Taking notice of the scene before him, he instantly throws punches at Kenan. He holds him up at his throat, asks him to look in his eyes, and very gravely threatens to murder him if he comes near Hazel ever again. He lets him go when Hazel pleads them to stop. With a bloody face and scared wits, Kenan escapes. When Ali asks Hazel if she's okay, she expresses her disapproval at his actions. She wanted to keep her job, because that was her bread and butter. When Ali offers to take care of her, she asks whether that means he will find her a new job, or if he will beat up anyone who treats her badly. She doesn't like that he reminds her of how helpless and pitiful she is, and asks him to leave. He does, leaving behind her trinket. Hazel can later be seen trying to get her eyes to somehow work again, while Ali is reflecting. One day, Hazel waits for him near the lot. She tells him she quit her job, and now she needs him to take her somewhere on the weekend, because he said he would take care of her. Ali gets her a cute puppy from the shelter who could grow up to be her guide. She loves it. He wants to name it after the Northern Star, that is Simul in Turkish. On the weekend, they go to a quiet place near a stream. Ali recalls he would go there to play and catch fish, along with his friends from the orphanage nearby, where he grew up. He has never met his family. She asks for two stones and feels them. She declares one of them to be resembling Ali. She hands him the other stone, which would be Hazel. Ali brings her to a makeshift swing in the middle of the water. She has a wonderful time. When Hazel is out on a walk with her puppy, Ali enters her home to find it empty. He has a great idea at that moment. He blindfolds 
folds himself and goes about the house, taking note of everything that comes in the way that could be annoying or potentially dangerous. He then rounds the table corners, places things in better positions, takes out the threshold and the bars on the windows, allowing more light to come in. When Hazel comes back home, she's surprised to know Ali is already there. He takes her shoes off and lets her feel the differences around the house. She's extremely delighted at his kindness. She expresses herself by kissing him. Ali visits her every day, they watch movies together, play games and sometimes just sit on the rooftop, loving each other's company. When he has back pain, Hazel gives him a massage. She explains she learned it professionally at an institution for blind people. Ali asks her what it feels like to not be able to pursue her dream profession. She claims one gets used to it after a while. There are a lot of things Hazel wishes to do which she cannot do. But she's happy to have Ali know. Ali proposes they open up a shop together, where she makes pots and bowls, and he manages it. She likes the idea. They are very much in love with each other at this point. During breakfast, Hazel mentions she wants to take him somewhere again. She also mentions that it is her birthday. Ali puts a flower in her hair and kisses her head. Hazel takes him to the grave of her parents. She introduces him to them, and wishes they could have met him. Ali asks about their passing. Hazel remembers that fateful day, exactly five years ago, which was the last time she celebrated her birthday. She was driving with her parents when all of a sudden she saw a man jump from a window, blazing hot on f A man driving a truck next to them was also caught up looking at the same thing, causing them to crash. Hazel's car flipped and resulted in the loss of her parents and her losing her eyesight. Ali realizes it was the same man he was confronting who set himself f jumped out of the window. He tried to save the man, but he couldn't. He had also seen the accident take place. He feels incredibly guilty, but says nothing, even when Hazel says her parents must have sent Ali to her to take care of her. Instead, he unleashes his anger and pain on a punching bag. He cries, feeling horrible. Ali enters Hazel's house to find glass shattered on the ground. He is worried, and finds her at the hospital. She insists she's fine, and that she just lost her balance. But her doctor calls Ali to inform him that she used to be guided by whatever bits of light she could see. But her vision is now getting progressively worse, and she needs to get surgery under a month. They also have a donor ready. The matter is of the heavy cost of the surgery. His coach and friend do not have that much money to lend him. It cannot be paid in installments, which makes it more difficult. Coach insists Ali is not to blame for the accident. But Ali knows it was his reckless and bad actions that resulted in such tragedy. Ali visits his colleague whose offer he previously turned down. Ali asks him to lend him money, but he refuses, saying he will give him the job instead, because it can help him make more money. It is presumably a boxing fight, which he refers to as a job. Ali and Hazel visit an amusement park. Between the fun rides, he asks her why she hid the fact that she could have surgery right away, since there was a suitable donor available. She says she couldn't pay for it. But more than that, she said the struggle of being disabled lessened the pain and guilt she felt, as she held herself responsible for her parents. Ali persists with it, because he wants her to be able to see him, and their future children. He tells her he has some money saved up that they could use. For his fight, Ali starts training strongly. His coach, however much he wanted Ali to start boxing again, is not happy. He doesn't want him to get in that particular fight, because he knows the reality of his opponent. He is sure Ali will not make it out alive. His friend takes his side against the coach, because there's no other way he can make that much money so soon. And if he loses the chance, he will forever live with the guilt of ruining his lover's life. Ali trains hard and fast. He gets the money in advance from his colleague. He gives Ali a phone to contact him. Hazel is now at the hospital, soon to undergo surgery. She is excited to finally see Ali. She claims she will look at him, and only him, for 23 hours straight. And for the remaining time, she'll look at the sky, her flowers, her puppy, and her house that he rearranged. She jokingly wonders if Ali is as handsome as she imagines him to be. Ali says he is not up to par with her expectations, which is why she won't recognize him when she sees him. She thinks that's impossible. The day of his surgery, she reminds Ali how much he means to her, and asks him not to go anywhere. He assures her he has nowhere to go. When she is taken in, Ali leaves for his fight. It's in Bulgaria. He's given a fake ID with the name Dogen Yelmaz. On his way to the ring, he notices a lot of helplessly injured fighters. His colleague is already there. He tells Ali not to be nervous, and not to think about beating his opponent. All he needs to do is survive. The rules are just to be on alert, and not get beat to a pulp. The current fight ends in one of the fighters being dragged out unconscious and bleeding. Ali's colleague asks not to disgrace him, because he bet on Ali. Once inside the ring, Ali takes note of all the faces watching him. All of them probably bet on his demise in the ring, because they all start cheering when his very huge and buff opponent shows up. Not so unexpectedly, Ali's colleague turns out to have bet against him, despite what he said to Ali. He is sure that after four years of no fighting, it is impossible for Ali to win. He has also convinced another better to pick the same side. Ali's opponent instantly gets the upper hand. Ali can only get a few kicks and punches in before he is beaten to a pulp. 
As he lies on the ground, bleeding, he remembers Hazel and his beautiful memories with her. He stands up with newfound strength and begins to duck and fight properly. He gives it his all, and manages to put his opponent in a chokehold. His opponent loses consciousness, declaring defeat. The better thinks he was set up, and is extremely mad about the money he just lost. Ali's colleague tries to defend himself, but he gets stabbed real soon. On his way back, Ali calls the hospital to check on Hazel. Before he can get an answer, he gets hit by a car. A bunch of men get out of the car and attack him with a knife. They throw him the sea. At the hospital, Hazel is done with her surgery, but she refuses to open her eye bandages and see, until and unless Ali is with her. The doctors and nurses try to explain that they need to examine and check if the surgery went well. Hazel, however, refuses to comply. When Ali doesn't return, she eventually has to proceed with the post-surgery treatment. She can be seen waiting for Ali at their lake, the restaurant they went to, and his house. But there's no news of him. Hazel is supposed to evacuate from her house, but she delays it, because that's the only place Ali can find her. But she cannot delay it any longer. She begins to move her stuff when a mailman delivers her a letter. It's from Ali. He says he's leaving, and he could only tell her the truth through a letter. He says he wouldn't be able to tell her, even if he came back to her. He admits to being the cause behind her accident, when the burning man slipped through his hands. He was not sent to her as her light, but was rather her darkness, he says. Hazel is devastated. A year later, Hazel works at an art shop. When a client asks her out on a date, she turns him down and tells him that she's married. Her friend and co-worker suggest she should stop rejecting people and telling them she's married. She could give a chance to some guys who seem good. Hazel hears none of that. He invites Hazel for dinner with his wife, but she passes, because she's always hanging out with them as a third wheel. She reminds him she needs to look after Simmel, her puppy. Hazel then goes to the hospital, where she works as a mass use. She jokes around with an elderly patient when someone lying on a bed in the same room recognizes her voice. It's Ali. He looks at her and tears up, but says nothing. Hazel notices him, and the old man tells her he's been brought from Bulgaria. He adds that he must be in a lot of pain, because he moans every night. Hazel wishes him good health and recovery, but he doesn't respond. She goes over to check on him. She reads his physiotherapy chart and learns he has just started to walk again. She makes him turn around for a massage. His back suddenly feels very familiar to her. However, his name is written as Dogen. She turns him back around, assures him that he'll heal soon, and leaves. Ali clutches the stone Hazel gave him in his palm. Simmel the puppy has grown into a beautiful big dog. Hazel tells her friend that she needs to take her turtle to the vet, because he seems to be sick. It is Ali's turtle. She leaves to take Simmel on a walk, just when Ali appears. He hears her bid goodbye to her friend. He walks into the shop with crutches, one of his legs seems to be limp. He notices the impatience plant, and the ring on the man's finger. He also sees his turtle. He walks out feeling heavy when suddenly, Simmel runs to him and jumps on him, making him fall. Hazel rushes to help him up and apologizes. She recognizes him from the hospital, and asks if he's okay, to which he just nods. Simmel clearly recognizes him and tries to run to him again, but Hazel pulls her back. When Hazel goes back in the shop, she notices her turtle has disappeared. Her friend has no idea. Hazel asks if the man with the limp just came by, and her friend says he bought the impatience plant. Realizing the truth, Hazel runs out, looking for Ollie. She can't find him and breaks down, wailing. She calls the hospital, only to find out he was discharged. Ollie is by the stream, where he lets his turtle go. When he senses Hazel appear behind him, he turns away from her. She reminds him how she said it was impossible for her to not recognize him. She apologizes for being so late. She tells him his face was the only thing she ever dreamed of seeing, because she cannot live without him. They both realize they've missed each other a lot, and embrace each other in a hug. 